Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. We found out that uh, Shaq Leonard is uh, going to visit the Eagles next. And, um, of course, the Cowboys are getting killed by that. I have some thoughts on that. I want to get my thoughts together about that before I have a response because this may be a deja vu moment here. Before we kill the Cowboys, let's stop for a second and, and weigh everything in here. But beyond that, I've had a few people that have been um, emailing me about um, one Dakota Rain Prescott. Dak, this is getting kind of kind of crazy because it seems like all of a sudden people are trying to change the narrative here on one Dakota rain rain down on me, Prescott. So shout out to Matthew Hamilton. Matthew shared this with me from the Pat McAfee show, and I want to actually I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it, but I've had quite a few people who have uh, text messaged me and said you got to watch this Pat McAfee show. You know, the thing that's kind of cool is um, Pat McAfee, of course, went from doing his own thing to going to ESPN. What I hope to have is that maybe Pat McAfee ends up being a revolution as far as ESPN goes, because ESPN used to be the worldwide leader in sports. They knew everything about sports. And you used to go to ESPN because you got all the highlights. You got trusted information. I don't know what happened to it becoming the Jerry Springer show, but it has been just terrible. Um, also, Marty McHugh also sent, the, sent it to me as well, so shout out to you, um, as well as uh, Jacqueline as well sent it, so I've had quite a few people, so shout out to all of you. Um, but I hope that Pat McAfee ends up being the change that ESPN needs to become relevant again. Um, that's not to say that people don't watch because they do. I, I watch mostly because of the bullshit that you get because I like to go ahead and counter that bullshit. But be that as it may, Dak Prescott, who has been the most trashed player maybe in the history of football, if you can find me somebody who has been scrutinized more than Dak Prescott, by all means, put me in my place because I, I want to hear it because I don't know of anybody that has been scrutinized the way that Dak Prescott has. Be that as it may, be that as it may, he's beginning to get some love. And I dare say since Micah Parsons started talking about him being, you know, putting him up there with the MVP candidates. Now, some of the people are being carried, kicking and scratching um, the whole way and not wanting to get on board there. They're going to always come up with the narrative to say it doesn't matter. You know, when Dak Prescott was winning, they would say, well, it's dinking and dunking. You know, he's not going down the field and, and making that a derogatory thing. But Joe Montana's whole career was basically dinking and dunking for the most part. And isn't it about winning? They were winning. And you look at Dak Prescott and the amount of years that he's been successful with the Cowboys. No, they haven't won the Super Bowl. But there's a lot of guys that they're claiming that are great that haven't won playoff games, that haven't won a Super Bowl, been to a Super Bowl as well. But now, let's take it from somebody who's been out there on the field and understands with the Pat McAfee show talking about Dak Prescott. Let's listen in to what they had to say. In his cadence, uh, apparently, in 2023. Yes! Here we go! Here we go. Here we go. Normally it's like red 18, green 19. Like you hear about this. And then hi, Russell hi. Wilson hi, hi. has this cadence that I heard and it kind of infiltrated. I think I was listening in my car as we were driving home from Lucas Oil Stadium. And it sounded like it was 1910 with mm -hmm. football. This is what he said. Put three. I never even, I didn't even know that existed. So, uh, like, you're a person to ask who, because obviously the hard count and the cadence is something that you're like world renowned for at this mm -hmm. at this point. Why is the here we go entering my life, and how did this not happen beforehand? And what is like the evolution of cadences that we've got to this point where there's so many different ones seemingly at the same time? Well, I think that's a great question. I mean, just. 
first, I want to talk about Dak because um, he's become one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch. Uh, I've watched more football this year than any other year because in normal years, you just, you're getting ready for games, so you're never watching football, right? And you might see some scores on your phone and maybe every now and then, you know, see a Sunday night game uh, and you might get Monday, part of Monday or Thursday. But you're, not, you're just not, not watching a lot of games. And this year I watched a lot more games than usual. And, you know, Tom had some comments about, Brady had some comments about some of the mediocrity in the game. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say Dak is not who he was talking about oh, um, for a number of reasons. But I just love that it, he's really playing the position. What I mean by that is I'm watching him make Ringo calls. So that's protection adjustments against – these crazy looks and picking things up. I'm watching him, uh, you know, bring the tight end back in against the zero pressure and throw an old concept we used to run for a touchdown to CeeDee Lamb in the back of the end zone. I'm watching him use his cadence uh, beautifully and and uh, and get into this rhythmic, mm. here we go, into like uh, dummy, using it as a dummy sometimes, doing it twice, into like other cadences. I mean, I've, the last four or five weeks, I've gotten to see more of their games. Wow. And I just want to say, like, he's playing a position in a really impressive way. And for whatever reason, maybe because he's the Cowboys quarterback and it's one of those premier positions in sports, um, like I feel like the Green Bay quarterback has been for a long time and some other, you know, positions in, in various sports, he might take a little more shit than, than he deserves or, mm-hmm. or maybe it's deserving of the position, I guess. But I love the way he's playing, and I love the way he's playing, like really playing. I'm not talking about just like, oh, making good throws. I'm talking about like it seems more rare that guys are actually really playing a position where you're making adjustments, you're handling everything line of scrimmage. Now you're doing this crazy cadence stuff. Like I love it, and I just want to shout out Dak for like really Damn. impressing me. Um, that multiple, baby Dak. Multiple times. Yeah, Dak. Hey, man, Dak, he doesn't hear that a lot. No, he doesn't. Doesn't hear, get to hear that a lot. Uh-uh. Way to go, Dak. Here we go. <laughs> but that, but the, the evolution of the, of the, you know, of the cadence from my perspective, you know, Brett obviously uh, came up with a rhythmic cadence that has a snap point a little bit different than maybe we grew up where it was like down, set, hike, or go, you know, and he snapped the ball on the hike or the go. Mm-hmm. Um, this this became a snap point at different times, whether it's second number or second color, and created this rhythmic type of cadence that you also were able to adjust to drop people off sides. Then there was the fad with the Omaha stuff that, that I think Peyton was doing, um, which was really just a way to do all his crazy stuff he was doing at the line of scrimmage. People were like, what does Omaha mean? Omaha meant, hey, mother... We got two seconds on the play clock, <laughs> and I need this shit snapped quickly. So I'm just going to say, oh, my God. Yeah. Right? It was just uh-huh. it was a rhythmic thing to get us uh, in and out of uh, of a cadence late on the play clock so we could do everything else in the line of scrimmage, his real calls, his dummy calls, his adjustments. Um, and then, obviously, when you have that, then you can change. Then you can go, hey, second Omaha here, or have some code words that mean – no snap and different things. We obviously use the cadence uh, for years in Green Bay to uh, as as a weapon, uh, and I always said it doesn't even matter if we draw them off sides because if they're thinking about it and they're watching the TV copy and they're studying it, mm-hmm. they're they're going to be a little bit slower off because they just don't want to jump off sides. Um, and then obviously we used you know twelve on the field for a long time as well where we're taking shots. But if you look at the the interesting evolution is that. Uh, not every team still is willing to snap it and take a shot. I mean, for a long time, I felt like, uh, you know, Cincinnati, I remember, would snap it and take a knee, which I always thought was wild. Uh, Indy, I think, for the most part, would try and just tap the guy. So a guy comes upside and tap him. Well, I always said, man, snap that, snap that thing. Let's take a shot. You know, like, I don't care, like, if you block anybody, just snap that. And then, that, and then, the, then what you saw as well coming out of a 2015 game with some complaints by a certain coach. Uh, now they, they started whistling things very quickly. If a lineman moves Third slightly coach, uh, before the snap, that they would blow the play dead. Uh, it really had to be guys off size, line does not move at all, will allow the play to happen. And then the other adjustment was 
which didn't happen. I remember a play specifically from 2009 against Detroit where Vandenbosch was like way off sides. And I like did some pirouette spin around and hit Donald Driver for about 50 yards. Um, that play wouldn't have, wouldn't exist in today's game because there's uh, unabated to the quarterback, which means that the defensive player is in a compromising position for the for the uh, offense and really for the quarterback based on his jump. Um, uh, so now it's it's a little bit more difficult uh, to get people, but we got people three times in the game uh, on Friday. Timmy did a great job with the uh, with the cadence. Unfortunately. The downside of it is you can't have your own guys jump offsides. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can't have a false start. So we had, I think, three uh, offsides and two false starts and a holding, which negated the other one. So overall, it's kind of a wash. That uh, that needs to be a little bit of a bigger bigger weapon when we use it. And that's why I think some teams don't want to use it. But I love what, da- what Dak did. That was beautiful. I'm mm-hmm. laughing at Russ. I think uh, looking wow. at the score in that, it looked like it was 24-12 or 27-12 at that point. So I don't know if he's messing around because sometimes in practice – I'll do stuff like that where I'll change the cadence and just say hut one, hut two, whatever. The fact that they snapped that on hut three is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, wow. but if you have a rhythmic cadence, you can get guys. There's 24 12 guys. If you have a rhythmic cadence, you can get guys to jump off sides, and uh, they can really be a weapon because at bare minimum they're thinking about it. And if they're thinking about it, they're not going to quite get off on the snap. What is it normally? Uh, it's normal uh, number color, right? Number color, and then you bounce it back. How did we get to here we go? And are we just looking for any three syllable? Like, what is the how? Do, how do you think Dak ended up with here we go? I think you should ask Dak. I don't know. I don't want to speak for him. I love it though because it's loud. Okay. Everybody can hear it. And if you watch the and I was watching the synchronization of the plays, right? He started with "Here we go," set hut, and he did that. I don't know three, four, five times, and then came back, and it was a no play, and he go "Here we go," set hut, and they jumped, and they got a freebie, right? And then they came back and did a couple of them. Uh, so I love the sequence in, and that, and that's the beauty of, of a guy really playing a position. And there's a lot of great quarterbacks. There's only a few guys that that really play the position. Um, meaning they do all the little things, mm. and, and Dak's doing it, and he's having a hell of a season, and it's been it's been fun to watch. Uh, wow. Season. Yeah, it's like old school feel, and you talk about chatting with. Thank you for the explanation. Wow. So, for all you guys out there that say Dak is trash and doesn't pass the eye test and everything else, future Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer says he's one of his favorite guys to watch and gives him full credit. So there you go. There you go. Like Rashid would say, he, you know what? Oh, my God. Mm. You know, you, you sit here and you think about things that you hear and stuff. Going through that last that last game that – we watched with Rashid, the Giants and Cowboys, the last time we spent time together. I did see him, of course, a couple of days later because I was taking him over. Uh, I went to the grocery store for him and picked up some stuff and things. And we did a video where he answered the door wearing a bag over his head and things. But I remember on that Sunday, after the way that game was going and the way Dak was playing, Rashid was always, I'll take Daniel Jones. I'll Daniel Jones. I, are you serious? Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott. He finally said, I'd take Dak Prescott over Daniel Jones. He finally said that. So, you know, I miss him. I, I really and truly miss Rashid. Man. All right, good people. That's what we got. We literally have... Aaron freaking Rodgers. Aaron freaking Rodgers saying that he loves Dak Prescott. Wow. All right. I'll see you soon. Eagles lose. I'm still going to have a good week. long as the Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Because we're still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett. Seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Yeah. Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Yeah. Exactly. But we actually had a good team. What? 
Oh, now, yeah. you, now you want to see see the shit now. When he with y'all. When we be dealing with it all this damn time. How do you fucking call he plays? how to do it. How in the fuck? I don't get this. No, but Jason Gert. Seriously, Jason Gert. How do you fucking call plays? Like he was over there trash. I'm over here. Oh, oh, my oh my God! I don't believe this right now. <laughs> right now. How do you feel? How do you feel about the team, my shit? No, oh my God! Like it's Jason Gert. <laughs> it's Jason Gert's fault. Like y'all been saying for ten years, Jason Gert. How the fuck man, you call? Man, uh, how do you right? call on four, a uh, third and fifteen? You man, call a five-yard play. Then the next play, you go down, you call up a 20-yard play, you hit the first down. Then you put Danny Dimes in the position to throw a fucking interception. Seriously? Run the goddamn ball or something to get the field. So I, oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to hell home. I'm going to hell home. <laughs>